11.30 p.m. and the crane and rigging department is transporting a massive transformer from a substation on the Lower East Side to New Jersey. If it looks like Con Ed never sleeps, that's because it doesn't. Well, the reason we move it on a trailer with 19 accidents is so we don't damage any of the infrastructure in the city. The gas pipes, water pipes, subway tunnels we ride over. Once it reaches West Side Pier 86, the transformer is loaded onto a barge. Section manager Bill Dunn coordinates the move. The average lifespan of the transformer is about 40 years. Go ahead, go for it. These units are being retired because we're upgrading the system in Lower Manhattan. So when we take the unit, we want to do an autopsy to see if there are things we can learn about units that do stay in service for this length of time. Where is the transformer graveyard? Just across the Hudson at GNS Technologies in Kearney, New Jersey. A recycling plant for valuable transformer materials, it is also an autopsy site for Con Ed. Once a family scrap metal business, GNS now has 300 employees. Jeffrey's father is the S in GNS, and my father is the J. I like the BC very much, and still today, after over 40 some years, I'm still in the business. We recycle about 98% of the components of a transformer. Everything but the waste paper inside the transformer core gets recycled. And the paper goes to the hazardous waste landfill. The aluminum from these transformers can be in your soda can tomorrow. The first step is to cut the top cover off with a plasma torch. If you don't know what you're doing, it's very dangerous. We wear hard hats, safety glasses, proper gloves, steel-toed shoes, respirators if required. Besides recycling, transformers are dismantled at GNS for research. Earlier today, a Con Ed team headed by John Sandstrom examined a unit that once served Manhattan's Midtown East area. The work that we do on these units is for reliability. If we have a transformer problem, this tells us on other units like this, we may have this problem coming up. Take the insulating boards away. Don't need that. We always look at this information when we're taking a winding apart. This tag here tells us who wound it, what it's for. This is the spec for making that winding. It's a serial number of the unit. It tells us the date that it was made and the man that made it. This date was 8-15-83. It could be a good method or a bad method. So if there's ever a problem with the design, then they go back to the man and find out how he did it. A transformer steps down electricity from 138,000 volts to 13,800 volts through coils wound around an iron core. The high voltage coil provokes a flux in magnetism in the core, and this flux creates a lower voltage in the secondary or output coil. The top by the high voltage lead, where it comes into the coil, will take two samples out of there, take two samples out of the center, and then we'll take two samples off the bottom. This is craft paper, but we send them to the labs, and what they look for is the loss of life of the paper, and that will tell us the reliability of your transformer. Then each one of these coils is wound by hand on the mandrel and the lathe. If the coil is good and never had failures, then you want to follow his pattern of manufacturing the coil. A transformer can weigh about 200 tons. Translated into hard cash, that's $50,000 of recycled materials. Approximately 20% of the core weight of a transformer is made up of copper wire. The copper wire is then burnt. All the PCBs are removed of it. In 1979, GNS built a special furnace to comply with new PCB regulations. We bail them up into these cubes, and then we ship them off to a mill, where they'll make new products. This skid right here weighs about 5,000 pounds, and at today's market, is worth about $10,000.